Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and I have a quick little video that I wanted to make because I, uh, there are two things that I want to talk about. First off, uh, you might have seen this RGB digital backlight Game Boy that I, um, I programmed and you can see that it's all touch sensitive and quite snazzy and so a bit of a, uh, of an interesting thing that, uh, you guys might be interested in is I'm currently, uh, turn this down. Uh, I'm currently working with um, with a, a a fellow Game Boy enthusiast who runs a an online shop and he does custom modifications for Game Boys, uh, buy versions, backlights, all that sort of jazz. He does even uh, custom NES consoles. I'll so um, I'm not going to elaborate too much. We haven't you know gotten everything totally ironed out, but I'm currently in the process of. Um, providing him with some of the the chips that I've actually installed in here with the firmware burnt so that he'll be able to uh, start carrying my my digital RGB backlight controllers in his uh, modded Game Boys. So if you guys are interested in owning something like this, um, details will soon follow where you guys can um, contact him in order to, um, to purchase that from him. So yeah, um, I don't know if you guys are interested in stuff like this, probably if you're watching this channel, but yeah, um, that's pretty neat that, uh, I'll finally be able to, I don't really have the capacity to set up an online store and whatnot, so it really helps me out that he already has all that, um, that infrastructure in place, and I have the software, so yeah, we'll be partnering on that shortly. I'll give you guys more details as uh, things become more definite. But yeah, if you guys are interested in owning one of these Uber Duber digital backlit Game Boys, uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> so, on to the main content of my video now. So, i just gotten some ATtiny 45s in, and I would read online, I have the file here. So, pardon the crudity of the shot. You can see here, I downloaded a file, um, written for the the Arduino style AVR chips called PS Knee. And this is essentially an open source PS1 stealth mod chip. Now you might have seen, I, I don't know if I made a video on this or maybe I have, maybe I haven't. I've made so many videos I forget. Anyway, I had modded my slim PS1 to have a mod chip in it and it was one of the pick variants um, that you know they used to use those one time programmable um, 8 pin chips. And I'd program that onto a 16F629, uh, I believe. So that was quite a while ago, and that was not a stealth mod chip, so it would work with, like, you know, 90-some percent of the library. But the very few games that came out towards the end of the life that used, like, any piracy uh, code on the disk to detect mod chips, that wouldn't work with that mod chip. However, I found this a couple days ago, PS Knee. I was uh, trolling some forums. Well, not trolling. I was going through some forums, and I found someone mentioned PS Knee, and I, I thought, well, I never heard of that. What the heck is that? So it ends up being an open source stealth mod chip, as I said, uh, compatible with all Sony PS1s. And yeah, it's usable for all platforms for Arduino. Um, preferably, they suggest an AT Tiny because they're just uh, tiny 8 pin chips here. And they're pretty cheap compared to if you wanted to go, you know, buy an entire Arduino. Yeah, it might cost two or three bucks, but an AT Tiny is a lot smaller and a lot, you know, more simple, basically. Anyway, so the the absolute wonderful thing that blows my mind is because it's open source, they have a full description of exactly how the security on the PS1 works, and it is laughable. Basically, on the disc, as it goes to load the disc, it'll read. Um, the data and it uses I believe some kind of like uh, servo feedback action um, so the error signal in that or some some signal relating to that um, will actually decode into ASCII you heard me right it's just serial ASCII essentially so if you um, were to inject the data correctly um, what will happen is that that will detect either a couple plain ASCII letters, S-C-E-A, S-C-E-E, -E, or S-C-E-I, depending on what region you are. So this doubles both as copy protection as well as uh, region locking. So what this chip does is when it first turns on, it'll rapidly, it'll, you know, emit a few times these three ASCII strings. 
it'll inject it into the correct signal on the board, uh, assuming you solder it correctly. And it'll do that repeatedly for, I think, a couple seconds, and then it turns off. So the reason why it turns off is because of that stealth um, aspect. So what the later software on the PlayStation 1 started doing is um, the earlier chips would keep transmitting this data for as long as you had the system powered on. So what they ended up doing was um, they would check to see, you know, after it already loaded the game after a little while, it would check to see if it's still reading the signal. Then it knows that you have a mod chip injecting, you know, an artificial um, string in there. So it would refuse to play the game after that point. So what mod chippers started doing was they just had a timeout. So it would just transmit this for a couple seconds and then shut off. And so in order to handle multi-disc games, though, they had to read the lid sensor. So if you open the lid sensor, it basically resets that timer, and for like another five seconds, it'll transmit again. So this is really stupidly simple. Like, I'm really surprised that this is all the security that is on the PS1 it is ridiculous compared to modern security, which is much, much, much more complicated. But anyway, so here it has a simple explanation of how to... How to install it? Yeah, it says uh, 25 seconds, not 5 seconds. Okay, so like half a minute, it'll sit there and transmit. That is interesting. It goes through in quite a bit of detail. So if you guys want to download this file, I will uh, eventually get around. I need to find where I downloaded this. But um, if, if you just Google PSME, you can find plenty of forum posts where people have links to this code. Uh, so here they have... If you're using an ATtiny45 clocked at 8 megahertz internal oscillator, they have the exact pinout that you need to follow and all the code necessary. Now I found there's a bug, uh, well I don't know a bug, but a library issue with my version of Arduino IDE. Um, for uh, Flash.h I had to manually install the library. So you can just follow this link here and follow the instructions for manually installing that because I was getting compilation issues at first. Uh, but once I did that, everything compiled just fine. And if you are using an Arduino as a um, ISP programmer, these are the configuration. Um, so I needed to go into Boards Manager, and um, I had to actually install this library here, ATtiny by David A. Mellis. Uh, if you need details for that, you can just Google that information and um, learn how to install that. So I selected the ATtiny45 uh, here, and once again the 45 uh, internal 8 megahertz um, oscillator, and my port is just whatever my COM port happened to be when I when it, the USB device enumerated, and I'm using an Arduino as an ISP, and so I guess I'll go through it really quickly. If you want to use an Arduino as an ISP, you go into File Examples and then Arduino ISP and it opens up this window. And if you have any standard Arduino attached, like a, a Pro Mini or you know the original NG, uh, all you have to do is just um, program this to the board and this will program a firmware on the host Arduino basically that'll turn it into an ISP programmer. And so once you do that, all you have to do is set up these configurations for the ATtiny45. And so once you have everything configured, then you'll see um, I had wired it up according to the information in the uh, the text the text header of the the PSD file, and so everything's wired up now. Uh, ignore this chip. This is a pick. I'm doing something else with that. Um, so this is the ATtiny45 here, and I just have it wired directly to this um, clone Arduino, uh, you know, the original board. And so this is acting as a programmer. This is the target. It's programming it through ICSP. And so all I have to do, I've already programmed this actually. So all I'd have to do to program a new one, take the old chip out, grab a new chip, insert it the right way around. Okay, so now we're ready. So now all I have to do is if you, so if you press and hold shift on your keyboard and you go to the, um, the arrow button, I'm oh, sorry about that that error button where my mouse is and you press and hold shift it'll say upload using programmer so it'll program the target instead and so all you have to do is click that and it'll go through recompile and then you'll see it flashing and there you go done uploading so now I have two stealth mod chips 
Let's just quickly do the third one. Why not? So that's in there. Shift upload using programmer. It's recompiling and it's burning. So there we go. It's as easy as that. So unfortunately, I didn't bring my PS1 up with me. So I, I can't show you me installing it right now. But in a future video, when I finally get a chance to go back home, I'm going to show you a video for both a slim PS1 and I have a, a fatty PS1. I'll show you a video of me installing uh, two of these mod chips into those and getting that all squared away so that, you know, it's all set and ready to go and working. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys um, enjoyed the video. This was kind of a quick one. I thought I was going to do this anyway, so I thought I'd, I'd turn on the camera. And additionally, I wanted to mention about uh, future business prospects of me selling uh, my digital chip on on a, uh, a Feller Modders store. So yeah, um, I'll have details for all of this down below when I get around to it. Uh, but for now, I want to get this video uploaded quick um, because I have another video to edit, actually, uh, for tomorrow morning, which will be today for you guys because you'll be seeing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, hopefully you liked the video. Um, you know, like, comment, subscribe, do what you guys do uh, down below, and I will see you guys later.